Australia's treasure store of history is the Sydney Public Library, housing the Mitchell and Dixon wings and the Shakespearean room. Here, the wealth of past, present and future is stacked within pages more valuable than gold. Such a library is a bank of time. Its rich deposits are the actual records of a nation in the making. But students have other subjects besides history, and the library is the mecca of all those who would learn and prosper. Let into the floor of the lobby is a mosaic of Tasman's map of Terra Australis. Vague as to the east coast and Cape York, it was nevertheless an amazingly accurate representation of other parts of the new continent. Dutch Abel Jan Zoon Tasman was the original discoverer in 1642 of the Van Diemen's land, which later became Tasmania. Anyone may avail themselves of the public reading rooms in the library. A magnificent salon flanked by a huge treasure trove of volumes. Here in the great throbbing heart of a city, it is always quiet. But it is in the Dixon and Mitchell sections that the rarer books and pictures are preserved. In the Dixon library, we find paintings, etchings and drawings of many people who played an important part in Australian history. There, for instance, is Abel Tasman, who found Tasmania, but missed the east coast of Terra Australis, the great deserted land to the north. It remained for the English sailor Captain James Cook to strike the east coast of Australia at Botany Bay in 1770. On what Cook discovered, a virile nation was founded. The Mitchell Library is a treasure house of rare historical books journals, charts, logs and writing. No value can be placed on this marvellous collection of Australiana, containing everything worthwhile that has been possible to obtain since the days of Tasman. In the hands of the librarian officer is the actual journal of Matthew Flinders. In 1802, Flinders circumnavigated the continent. It was Flinders who, from the old term Terra Australis, took the name Australia. <laughs> The treasures make up a mighty catalogue, itemising the history of the nation day by day. Here in his own handwriting is Captain Bly's log of his epic voyage before and after the mutiny of the bounty. The journal of Governor Macquarie, the road builder who pushed settlements north, south and west. But not all the gems are pearls in the precious string of Australiana. The library possesses a first folio Shakespeare, conservatively estimated at a value of £20,000. A treasure so guarded that only a facsimile is shown to visitors. This is the original printed in 1623, and in the immortal bard's hamlet, rich in wisdom, they find neither a borrower nor a lender be. Wise advice, young lady. History is written in the newspapers, and the Mitchell Library is fortunate in possessing a full issue of Australia's first newspaper, the Sydney Gazette dated 1803, and its motto, Thus We Hope to Prosper. One of the big stories of Edition 1 was this report. James Bramsgrove, a farmer's labourer of Greenford in Middlesex, saved by his industry the sum of four guineas. With this he purchased a hog, and so the story goes on. The hog's progeny grew, and Bramsgrove's family prospered too, an early model on the wisdom of saving. But my young friend, you don't have to look to the past for opportunity, nor even wait all those years for money to accrue. For you have a book just as valuable as any in the library. Who, oh, me? Yes, you. It's your first folio to happiness and prosperity, the log of your journey through life. Yes, you have such a book right in your pocket. That's it, your bank book. what I mean? 
yes, that's the book that can give a young couple like you two, just starting out, a foundation as solid as Australia itself. In good times or bad, it is your soundest friend. Look after it. Buy only what you really need. Get full value all the time. Then your bank book becomes your passport to a happy and secure future. Thank you.